I want to go to John chapter 8. My God. John chapter 8, the verse 31. Just want to show you something briefly. It's a full teaching set, but I'll not do it. John 8, 31. Popular scripture we all know. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed. No, I'm reading, I'm reading King James. No, no, no. I don't like old King James. Yeah. So John 30, John 8, 31 and 32. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, if you abide in my word, you will also be my disciples indeed. And 32, and that's where we are focusing. And you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. You know, the old King James says, set free. But it says the truth itself will make you free. I want you to pay attention to some of the things that I'll be saying shortly because what I'm about to say, yeah, the verse 32, what I'm about to say is the cross of the whole matter. I can say this, and if we have ears to hear, we could just end this conversation. What am I speaking on? I'm speaking on prisoners. Let me get a title. I wrote this for you today. Prisoners of the supernatural. Prisoners of the supernatural. It may sound like a negative connotation, but it is the right thing that must happen. We have to come to a point where our work is totally expressed as a supernatural. We have to arrive at the point where our experience is totally supernatural. We have to become prisoners of the supernatural. Where the supernatural is where we live, express, and, uh, and does everything. Where the supernatural is such that we are locked in and we cannot get out. I don't know if you understand what I mean. You are locked in, prisoners of the supernatural. You are locked in this expression. You are locked in this experience such that there is absolutely nothing that you can do about it. It is your default place. It no. is because, uh, well, for a variety of your song that you sing, it is uh, the food you eat. It is everything that you do. Everything that you do, that life becomes supernatural for you. Prisoners of the supernatural. Many people are prisoners locked in a thought cell. Many people are prisoners of hope. And being a prisoner of hope is good. Being a prisoner of a thought cell negatively is wrong. But we want to become prisoners of the supernatural. So what I will be sharing this week and the weeks following is principles for assessing the supernatural realms for miraculous encounters. I desire to teach you so that the miraculous encounter can just be a normal thing. For some season now in my life, I was just telling somebody this evening, for some season now in my life, I am seeing intense angelic activity intense angelic activity. So I'm beginning to pay more and more attention. Um, you call me on the phone, I come alive. I, I, something, something unusual is happening to me. I'm sleeping at night and it's like somebody is singing over me every night. Every night, it's like somebody is, somebody is just standing there and is singing over me. And uh, I want to share with you some of the things that I've seen to to become the, the, the pivot is the things that are giving access to these things to come alive around us so that we can all, all of us can experience the supernatural, whether we like it or not. 
The Bible talks in the book of Isaiah, um, chapter 64. And somewhere there, it says that when you did awesome things, we did not look for. When you did awesome things, we did not look for. God does awesome things, and we are not searching for it. We are not chasing after them. We have not even prayed in that regard. But before we could realize, we are walking constantly in the supernatural realm. So these are some of the principles I want to share with you. Prisoners, the supernatural. And we have to be joyful to be prisoners of the supernatural. Because our salvation is supernatural. Our existence is supernatural. The born again experience is supernatural. Our life is indispensable from the supernatural. It's inseparable. You can't separate it. You can't have an existence without a supernatural. So Jesus said something. He says that you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. It now personifies the truth. He now identifies the truth as, as an expression that takes you, that holds you, and begins to walk you through a process of being free. And there are many of us, including me, who are sitting on this call, who, who are believing God for one thing or the other. I have been in circumstances where all I'm desiring is that a prophet would just speak the word of God or God would just give me a dream or God would just say a word to me. I've been in that circumstances. And even today, I, I had a call from a great, great, great prophet in this country. <laughs> and I'm like, God, I'm looking forward to a word from you. I'm looking forward to a word from you. But we only had pleasant trees and he he checked on me, and that was it. And he said, bye-bye, you get back to me. I said, wow, God, what have you just done to me? But it's such a joy. We need to become prisoners. So let me make the first statement, and then I go to maybe one or two principles in the next 15 minutes. In the realm of the spirit, and when it comes to the miraculous, you cannot see encounters. You cannot experience encounters if you do not, you cannot see what you do not know. This is the point I want to make. You cannot come into encounters that you know nothing about. So constantly people may be experiencing encounters, but they know nothing about the encounters. So they are unable to pick up that encounter and apply it for a full grown miracle. In the realm of the spirit, this is the cross of the matter. If you want to see something, for example, you want to see angels. For example, you want to experience, um, um, there's a particular realm you want to experience. Maybe it's childbirth. Maybe it's childbirth. You've not been seeing children in your world. Good. There is something you can do in order to, Cause moment. There's something you can do in order to activate that encounter for childbirth. So what you do not know, you cannot experience. It's difficult to touch it unless by divine providence. It now becomes necessary that all of us begin to invest into the right set of knowledge in God, the spiritual knowledge in God that brings about light. Because you see. Knowledge brings about light and it enhances your work of faith and the communication of your faith. When I talk about the communication of your faith, how you apply your faith, when how you engage your faith, your work of faith is everything you do. It is not just about believing. Your work of faith is holiness. Your work of faith is, is believing God for a miracle. Your work of faith is 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 being joyful and and walking in praise your work of faith is your entire life but in the realm of the spirit if you do not have knowledge of a thing it becomes very very difficult for you to powerfully touch that thing number two in the realm of the spirit whatever you can see if you have knowledge that knowledge gives you a picture an ability to see 
if you can see that thing, you can possess it. That is why it becomes important that we invest into discovery and knowledge so that we can begin to see. Now, for people to begin to experience the miraculous as a prison house where we dwell in, for people to begin to experience the miraculous as a default, for there to be constant angelic encounters, they don't just happen. They don't just happen. There is a need to invest into the right set of knowledge. For people to, for example, let me give you an example. Maybe you are here and you desire childbirth. You desire financial encounters. I call it wealth encounters. You desire to begin to walk in the prophetic. You desire to see angels. I asked myself the question. I was asking God today. I said, God, how can angels be my brothers? Because one angel told John the divine, he says, the worship God for I am a brethren like you. For the spirit of prophecy is, and for the, uh, with the testimony of Jesus Christ, the spirit of prophecy. How can there be somebody who is my brother and I don't see the person? How can that be? So you see, it becomes important that you invest into the right set of knowledge. And that knowledge begins to produce light in your environment. So if you have to experience a thing like childbirth, the prophetic, the supernatural, the miraculous, maybe you want to begin to experience pulling short legs out. This meeting is a whole pack meeting. It's not a meeting where um, I am I'm segregating and putting people in a category. It's okay, so let's just preach like this. I am unleashing and just going to unpack myself and the grace of God upon me in the years coming as we sit in this meeting. Because anybody that enters into this meeting, I want to challenge you, your life must become something else. Your work of faith must become something else. Your prophetic sensibility must begin to be heightened. Your senses will have to be awakened, will have to find deep expression. Yeah. So what do you do? One of the things that you can do is to take a scripture on that matter. And not just a scripture, locate scripture, locate knowledge of God's word concerning that matter. Meditate on that. Spend time with it. Um, somebody says romance the word. Uh, persecute the word. Unravel the details of that word. Let it become your default. One day you will just be there. If it's about seeing of angels, you'll just be there. You'll see somebody walking into your office and you'll be wondering whether you are having an experience or whether it's a dream or something, but you have found yourself in a world of reality. You want to have childbirth? You want to experience childbirth? Locate Samson's mother and begin to meditate upon that encounter the angel had with Samson's mother. Locate the encounter that angel um, had with, with Mary and begin to meditate on it. Locate the scripture that says that he builds the barren a home and begin to confess and speak that. I give you just a short time, in three months, you begin to step into a certain realm. You want to see angels? locate the scriptures that talk about angels. For example, if you start reading, if you start reading through um, the book of Ezekiel, you will be amazed some of the beings that are described. And you have to ask yourself a question, investigate it. What fabric are angels made up of? So I am sharing these things because I want to provoke a certain sense of faith in you. I want to provoke you to the place where the miraculous becomes an outpour where you are locked in, you are hedged in, and you cannot escape it. Even if you want to escape, Isaiah 64 says, when you did awesome things we did not look for, while we were not paying attention, awesome things are happening. While we were not, awesome things are happening. So Jesus said, you shall know the truth 
and <laughs> Nazmun, I love that. Huh? I love that. I love that. You have to. They are your brothers. They are your sisters. If I have to put it that way, they're just a neuter. Yes, I love that. They are neuter. They are your brethren. When the Bible talks about brethren, it's, it's a generic term. You have to experience even within. The Bible says this meeting as we are having right now, the Bible says that you have come into the assembly of innumerable company of angels. Into the place of the, the place where the spirit of justified men are made perfect. How can we go to our services where we are gathered in a place where the spirit of justified men are made perfect? Where it is an innumerable company of angels, where it is the place of where the elders are sitting, where it is the place where spirits are sitting. I think I'm going to do a, a, a teaching on angelic encounters. Uh, angelic realm, um, angelic beings, encounters with angels, angelic beings, elders, spirits, and, and what not, not, not. Once we are gathered together and they are present, we should be seeing them. We should be experiencing them. It must become a normal routine. In the book of Acts, I don't want to talk about angels tonight, but in the book of Acts, it was very clear when Peter was released out of prison, prison that them seeing angels was very common. They know who Nazmu's angel is. They know who Albert's angel is. They know who Mark angel is. When they see when they see this person, they say, "No, this is Mark's angel because he looks like Mark, and he has certain characteristics with him, and he has interacted. He's interacted with them, and so they know. How could they say?" In the book of Acts chapter 12, how could they say, no, it is not Peter. It is Peter's angel. How could they say, where did they, where did they get that from? How did they step into that knowledge? So I'm here to provoke you. This meeting is a meeting of red eye. That is why when it even delayed, I still want to jump on board. Because in the next three months, somebody who, who is even not connected to this call, but is supposed to be here will take seed in the next three months. Will take seed. Because as I am teaching and as we are praying, angelic encounters are going to be rampant. The, the father will hug his children, will just hug you. There will be an epipetal moment where we'll step into the baptism of, of the father's love and be baptized in his confidence. We will be hugged by God. In the next three months, some unusual things will be happening. This evening, while I was coming home, I stopped somewhere. And I got a call from somebody. When the person called me, um, the person greeted and introduced herself. And I said, oh, um, am I speaking to speaking to so-so and so person? He said, yes. I said, yes, you should have mentioned this name. But what you have mentioned, I don't know it. I said, are you OK? Is your body okay? She said, oh, I'm well. I said, but me, I want to, me, I'm not well, so I want to pray for you. And I started talking about some unusual thing in her body and how God is taking care of that thing. She said, my God, just today I came from the hospital and I was complaining to the doctor about this thing. I don't know what it is. I said, you will not be operated upon. And when that was happening to me, I just knew somebody was just standing with me and talking to me. And I was speaking confidently. You will receive a heart therapy and you will be baptized in the confidence of the Father. You will become more and more aware of your spiritual environment. You will become more and more aware of the prison house you have been locked in. Yeah, God is locking us into a prison house just like the ark of Noah, he is locking us in. And for the next 40 days and 40 nights, there shall be encounters constantly where the beasts, the lion would dwell with man, where the beast would dwell with man and not, and not devour man. Even after the fall, even after the fall, it so happened 
that man and beast dwell together in the same house. It is a prison house of encounters where the unusual happens. It is a prison house of encounters where the holy knowledge of God is rediscovered. It is a prison house of encounters where that which is not normal in terms of our existence become normal, where the supernatural is normal. And then secondly, I want you to take note of this, that it is a prison house of the supernatural, the super and the natural, the super and the natural. It is the super means God. Super speaks of something lofty outside this world. The natural speaks of you and I, our human capacity as we are, our frailty, our inability to do. Um, sometimes we are feeling sick and tired and sluggish. God brings the supernatural and plants it inside our humanity. So it is not going to happen to special men. It's going to happen to ordinary men where God is using ordinary people to do extraordinary things. Yeah. So the first principle, I want to share first principle with you. Maybe I'll just share only that. And then next week we can jump into other things. So much to share. Throughout this, I'll be sharing on the necessity for the right spirit setup. And that I'll talk about this. Next week, if it's the will of God, I'll talk about the necessity for childlike faith. And wait until you hear it and you pivot yourself correctly. Then I will also be talking about the necessity for unlearning maturity. Sometimes we have become so matured and so hard and so experienced so we cannot experience the supernatural, the simplicity of the supernatural. We think the supernatural should be in the complexity of our maturity, our hold, the fossil self, uh, our sense of arrival, our sense of capacity, our sense of I can do when it just needs to be inside our human frailty. I will be talking about unlearning maturity. I'll be talking about the necessity for light. The necessity for light. If it's the will of God, maybe next week I may start from the necessity of light. Then I would go ahead my God, Gabriel, I've been expecting, well, this should join. Then I'll be talking to you. I'll be talking to you about the necessity for the singularity of sight. Necessity for the singularity of sight. When I begin to share these things, it will recalibrate you by God's grace so you come into a realm. So let's talk briefly. Yeah, for 10 minutes. Let's talk briefly about necessity for the right spirit setup. For us to really lock ourselves in the realm, in that prison house of assessing the supernatural realm for miraculous encounters, it requires that our spirit man, our spirit woman, is set up correctly. Your spirit man, your spirit woman must be set up correctly. It's very very, very, very important. Extremely important. Just a moment. Let me grab something. It's very important. Very, very important. Let me get this. Very, very important that our spirit man is the most important agent in this whole experience. If your spirit man is not set up correctly, it becomes difficult. Anything that God will do in your life, anything that the realm of the satanic will do in your life, it must first of all be made manifest in your spirit. When that is done in your spirit, it can now begin to manifest in the flesh. The human spirit is correctly who you are. Your spirit is you, is who you are. Genesis chapter 2, 
the verse 7. Genesis chapter 2, the verse 7. The human spirit is the real you. You are not spirit, soul, and body. I am not spirit, soul, and body. Please pay attention to this because it will save you from many, many warfare. Many, many warfare. You could have a dream. Um, and in the dream, somebody comes to beat you in the dream. You could have a dream. And in the dream, somebody comes to handle a scroll to you. Or somebody puts you in a classroom and begins to teach you some powerful things. That experience you are having is not taking place in your physical body. That experience actually took place in your spirit. The impact, the information, the learning, the slap, the, that encounter took place, first of all, in your spirit. And you must know that your spirit has become that bank from which if you know how to engage your spirit through the word of God, you'll be able to bring out all of that blessing, all of that expression. So if God wants to bless you, the first thing he does to you is to bless your spirit. Any gift that will, make, will be made manifest is first of all deposited in your spirit. It's not here. So Genesis chapter 2, the verse 7, and God said, let us, uh, sorry, uh, uh, no, Genesis chapter 1, the verse uh, 26, first of all. It says, God said, let us make man in our own image and likeness. Is God spirit, soul, and body? I just ask a very simple question that should just make something very clear to you because I'm going to make some powerful statements right now. Is God spirit, soul, and body? No, God is spirit. God is spirit. So this is the way you put it. I am a spirit. I have a soul. And I live in a body. I want to encourage all of you. I've done some powerful series of teachings on he breath and man became. And if you are on podcast and the rest, just go to Spotify, for example, and look for he breath and man became or look for Mark Agbeko. I'll let, I'll let Albert post a flyer or maybe a link to, um, to the podcast. And when you go into that podcast, there's a whole lot of teachings there. I have some friends I posted their teachings there as well. When you go to the podcast, look for He Breath and Man Became. I think it's about either 10 part or 15 or 16 part series. Take time and listen to them all. You are a spirit. You have a soul and you live in a body. So God said, let us make man, let us make Albert, let us make Nazmo, let us make Mark, let us make Isaac, spirit, just like ourselves. In chapter two, the verse seven, and God molded man, the word man there is Adama, from the Hebrew is Adama, from which you have Adam, means clay, let us make clay and put on this spirit man. And the Bible said, God breathed into man the breath of life, and man became a living soul, a living being. And in that teaching set, I've, I've explained that the translation, God breathed into man the breath of life, the word life is sloppy. The translation should have been God breathed into man the breath of many lives. Go look for he breath and man became. I taught deeply on the on, on the concept of Hayim. The word life is the word Hayim in the Hebrew. I talked deeply on that. And Hayim is not just a word, but Hayim is many, many things. That word Hayim also means death. That word Hayim also means appetite. That word Hayim also means life. That word Hayim is also, it also means bubbly with life. That word Hayim also means self-generating life. That word Hayim, when I did a research, 
there were about eight or ten different expressions that means life. So when God breathed into man, he breathed into, into Zorina many lives. My God. If we have to lock ourselves in the supernatural and let it be our environment, there is the necessity that we have the right spirit set up. We have to go back, work on our spirit man, spirit woman, set it up correctly through the word of God and through prayer so that the supernatural can just be a constant flow. So God breathed into the clay, the breath of many lives, and instantaneously, man rose and he was fully intelligent. I heard a preacher say that Adam failed because he didn't go through process. I don't agree with that. God is not, excuse my language, God is not stupid. God is not crazy. God produced a man on the earth and that man made a choice to fail, not because he didn't go through a child as a process and went to secondary school and then went under teachers. By the time, by the time he was one, this guy who was called, who was called, maybe uh, they could have called me by now, uh, Mac Light. Then they just shortened it. Their parents can't see properly in their falling realm. They say Mac. And then they say, oh, he's a very stubborn child at age five. So we, we add Mac stubborn to it. They alter your destiny entirely. Who told you that Adam didn't go through the process so he failed? No. Adam didn't need to go to school because the thing that was put inside him, the thing was so powerful that it awakened him. The man was an awakened man. So he awakened. I hope you are with me. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Didn't need to. He rose to full-blown intelligence. Boom. Today, religion has destroyed us. Education has destroyed us. By the time you get to age, age, age nine, a lot of things have been put into you. The spirit set up right, garbage in, garbage out. The results will be negative. My God. The result will be negative. Mambo shakaya po silibe de gados. Mambere keshon di basakata de debe. The results will be negative negative so you always be experiencing constant defeat constant defeat constant defeat constant defeat because the thing that is manifesting as constant defeat is locked up in your spirit so your spirit is an important component you need to set it up right it must first of all happen inside your spirit if it doesn't happen in your spirit it will not happen you can't touch it in this natural realm that is why personally, and I've discovered this for many years ago, many, many years ago, when people approach me with peculiar issues, I start, first of all, investing into their spirit. I start, first of all, dealing with their spirit. I start, first of all, teaching them and bringing their spirit up to a level. Um, there were people who came to me and some said they wanted a miracle in something. I said, okay, let's start fasting because I know that when we start fasting, you will empty yourself. The carnal desires will come down. You will be, you will be like um, Elijah. You will hold your garment together. You will bring all of yourself together and hold it tight because you're about to take off. When you fast, you begin to be opened. Your spirit man opens. Do you know fasting attracts spirit is one of the most dangerous activities? Check throughout the Bible. Fasting empties you. And when a demon is cut out, he goes to search everywhere in the dry places and it will come back to see if the house it was removed from is empty. So fasting that empties you 
opens you to the realm of the spirit. And so I begin to teach them the word of God. I begin to give them the investment. And sometimes people don't understand why I do that. I just simply pray and it happens. No, we have to, we have to set things correctly. And I notice that sometimes if it's a 21, 21 days fasting, by the time we will reach second week, we are trying to struggle through 14 weeks. The miracle is happening. We don't need to finish 21 days. Yeah, we don't need to finish 21 days. So I'm giving you certain secrets that will help you. If we have to experience supernatural, have your spirit, woman, spirit, spirit man set up properly. So I will encourage you. There's a whole full-blown teaching done in series where I talk about he breath and man became. Your setup was not by flesh and blood. Your setup was by the spirit of God. And if you want to experience the spirit of God, then you want to really invest in setting up your spirit correctly. You want to experience the supernatural, then invest into setting up um, your spirit properly. The right set of words, the right set of teachings, the right set of wisdom. So I just I just did a Reader's Digest version of, of um, um, 18, 15 part series. He breathed and man became. So your spirit is important. When you have a dream and there was an encounter, that encounter is buried inside your spirit. Period. If it's a negative encounter, if you don't deal with it, it will begin to show up in the flesh. Sometimes when I minister to people, did I see Gabriel? I thought I saw Gabriel on the call. Yeah, Gabriel. Gabriel, I want to pray for you again. I want to pray for you again and again and again and again and again. Sometimes when I minister to people and the Lord, by grace, opens my eyes, the Lord opens my eyes, I will see in the person's spirit, the spirit of the person. And if, let's say, there's a problem at this joint, I will see the thing in that joint. But it is not a physical body. I'm seeing the spirit. And then sometimes the Lord will permit me to understand the level of impact that deposit has happened or has brought to the physical body. So it's sitting in the spirit. So you must first of all become sick in the spirit before you can be sick physically. If you are not sick in the spirit, you can never, never be sick. If you don't kill you in the spirit, you can never die. If you do not have angelic encounters inside your spirit, you cannot manifest it. So Jesus says that you will know the truth and the truth will make you, the truth will take hold of you and begin to make you free. It will come into different realms of your life and begin to segregate and make you free. Yeah. So let me read a few scriptures and then I draw the curtain on this and then pray because the meeting is set to run for up to the next 30 minutes. So, so that in 20 minutes, we can call it a good evening. Then next week, I'll come back into this support. The necessity for the right spirit set up. Go back, set up your spirit properly. Spend time in the word of God. How do I do that? I have to spend time in the word of God. How do I do that? I have to be a person of fasting. And I said fasting is one of the most dangerous activities. People don't just fast. You know, when we look at some of our brothers who fast, you wonder why they are fasting. Because fasting opens you to spirit. And that is why there are all kinds of spirits flying all over the place. I hope you understand what I just said. <laughs> when you fast, it opens you to spirit. So you look at the Hindus, they fast. Why are they fasting? To whom are they fasting? What are they opening themselves for? Our dear brothers... Our uh, dear Father Abraham's children, they fast. What are they opening themselves for? Believer, you fast. What are you opening yourself for? So fasting without the word of God, without prayer, it's not just a hunger strike. We used to hear hunger strike. No, it's a dangerous activity because it opens you to the realm of spirit. Spirits get attracted to you. They want, you see, I don't have time for this. 
The devil does not have a body. God does not have a physical body. God is spirit. We underscored that from the beginning. And God wants a body to operate here. So any man who avail himself, sanctify himself, consecrate himself to fast and see God, God wants to visit the man. If it's a good house, he wants to come and put deposits in there, bring investments in there. That is why some of the guys who do not like the word of God, but will find, will find time fasting and just pray in tongues, you just realize that something comes upon them. There is a grace that comes upon them, but they are not long lasting. They are not able to deliver the optimum. I know somebody who went to Atria Mountain. Those of us who are not in Ghana, there's a place called Atria Mountain in, in Ashanti region in Ghana. People go there to fast. I've never been there before. I've never desired to be there either. But somebody prayed over there and the place opened. And people have now, but somebody went to Atria Mountain and he said he was fasting, praying, and on the third day during his dry fast, he saw, he saw an angel walking to him and the angel entered into him. But that was not an angel. It was a mm -hmm. devil. That was not an angel. It was a devil. It was, it was a demon. He said, after the personality entered into him, when he looks at you, you will describe your intestine. And some of these guys walking around and giving flippant prophecy have nothing else to do with prophetic ministry. They have absolutely nothing else to do with God and prophetic ministry. They are possessed. They are fetish priests in suit. They are demon carriers. So one of the ways you can set yourself up and open yourself is to fast. And... The word of God. Engage the word of God through reading. Engage the word of God through audio Bible. Listening to engage the word of God through good music. The time is going. Good music. Do you know music is a mantra? I have a short video. I saw Michael Jackson, late Michael Jackson, explaining what the music does. He said it's a mantra. And if you have you have been in uh, occultism before, you understand what a mantra is. A mantra are recitations. They are recitation and proclamation. They make the decrees. But for them, as you make the mantra, as you make those decrees, it's a way of placing curses. You can place curse on somebody. And so when you listen to the wrong music, you are literally placing curses upon yourself. You are overloading yourself. No angel wants to come into that environment to come and minister to you. So you have to set your spirit right watch the good program you throw all those filthy things away you want to see ha huh, you have to do something we call wedography i coined that wedography just like there's pornography you do wedography porn graphy it is <laughs> the act of writing the thing on your eyes wedography let the word begin to come alive let the word be drawn on your eyes Redeem your eyes from the TV. Redeem your eyes. And then prayer. Engage in prayer. Engage in meditation. Not transcendental meditation. That one is evil. Engage in meditation. In transcendental meditation, they have no focus. But when it comes to meditation, we who meditate in the word of God, we have a focus. Our focus is a person. And that person is Christ. When they do translator meditation, they are just traveling who in the in the realms, going wherever they are going. Who knows? Only God knows. When they are engaging these things, they are engaging the realm of falsehood. We have a focus. Let me see if I adjust this meeting. It's not going to allow me to adjust the meeting. I wish I can adjust the meeting, but. It wouldn't allow me. So apologies. When we close, just forgive me. We'll make all these corrections properly. Set your spirit correctly. Are you experiencing this? Nice? Begin to feed your spirit. Just feed your spirit. Just that like the doctor gives you. Your medicine doesn't fix your spirit. The medication, it fixes your body. So that thing can go and come, can go and come. But now fix your spirit. Give it medicine. And begin to give... Every day, I'm taking doses of 10 chapters a day, three chapters a day. 
You are fixing the spirit. You are correcting that problem. You are dealing with realms. And uh, when I begin to talk about the necessity for light, you will begin to understand. The Bible, the Bible says that the word of God is like hammer. The word of God is like water. The word of God is like um, a fu a fire, water, fire, hammer. Um, the word of God is Christ himself. The word of God is a creative force. The word of God is light. And when God speaks, God speaks lights. God does not speak uh, English language or speak Ewe, speak a, 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 your native dialect. No, 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 no. God speaks light. When he speaks, beams of light go out. So as you begin to engage the word, beams of light are coming to your spirit. And, and the Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 6, the verse 22, it says that if your eye becomes singular, if your eye becomes singular, your body will be full of light. My God. And, and, and the light, the light is eyes. The light allows you to see. What I explained in this week, you will appreciate it. So all kinds of things begin to happen to you. I give you a few weeks. That sickness will run from your body. I give you a few weeks. That spiritual eyes we couldn't see will begin to see. You just you wake up one day and you realize that you are you are in a reality. You are becoming aware of something. You will begin to dream. Mando huh. Shikabayo. You begin to dream. So ready yourself. Grace is upon you. Set your spirit correctly. I just try to whet your appetite concerning this. So uh, a couple of scriptures and then I'm done. Proverbs chapter 18, the verse 14. The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity. The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity. But a wounded spirit, who can bear? But a wounded spirit, who can bear? There's something I didn't touch on. The human spirit has three components. It has the communion, the intuition, and then um, conscience. The human spirit has the communion, intuition, and conscience. And when we begin to explain, explain how divine communication comes and how you can receive prophetic word, you will appreciate your communion. You will appreciate your intuition. When we talk about prayer, meditation, you will appreciate your communion. When we talk about divine communication, you will appreciate your intuition. When we talk about processing of, of spiritual information, you will appreciate your conscience, the spirit's conscience, the conscience of the spirit. That awakens you and tell you things and prompts you. The human spirit has three components. Conscience, intuition, and communion. So I can be sitting here without necessarily opening my mouth to pray. But I'm in deep communion and meditation with God. It is happening in my spirit. My spirit is in tune with the Lord. And I can clearly communicate with him without saying anything. Jack. Proverbs 18.14. The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity. But a wounded spirit, who can bear? Who can bear? Who can bear? Who can bear? Yeah. Now that you are a believer, you are in a great light. By the time you meditate on the word of God, you are above everything. Gabriel, that is that is an experience. Eh? It's a rich experience that God is going to use. The spirit of a man sustains his infirmity. For any man to succeed, your, your spirit. Um, for you to be a millionaire, it must first of all happen inside your spirit. So when you dream, you saw yourself in a lot of money, a lot of opportunity. No, no, no. It's not the outside thing you are seeing. You are seeing the manifestation in your dream, but... In the spirit, when a prophet is prophesying, I see money. Uh -huh. It is not just a physical, but he's seen an investment that a deposit that have been made. Job 32, 7 and the verse 8. I said, age should speak and multitude of years should teach wisdom. But there is a spirit in man. And the breath of the almighty gives him understanding. He breathed and man became. There's a spirit in man, the breath gives understanding because of time. Proverbs 20, 27. 
Proverbs 20, 27. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Get that. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Is the candle of the Lord. Searching all the inward parts of the belly. Proverbs 20, 27, amplified. The spirit of man, the factor that in human personality proceeds immediately from God, proceeds directly from the nature of God, is the lamp of the Lord searching all the innermost parts. So if I want to prophesy to you, there is a way by the spirit of God, I can just connect to your spirit like a magnet. By the spirit of discernment, I can just speak to your spirit. And I'll begin to speak details about you getting, pouring information out of your spirit. Not necessarily God speaking out of heaven, but every information is coded. What will happen to you the next 20 years is locked up in your spirit. I can just begin to unravel that. Very powerful. The New Living Translation the Lord's light separates the human spirit, exposing the hidden motive. God's light steps even into the human spirit and separates, separates the parts, divides it. Intuition, communion, conscience, and goes to look for motives, which you and I cannot see. That is how you can discern thoughts. The Bible talks in Ephesians chapter 4, is the designer of thoughts. The word of God is a designer of thoughts. It divides between the bone and the marrow, between the spirit and the soul, the word of God. So, so it's important if we're going to be prisoners of the supernatural, this is one of the key principles for assessing the realm of the miraculous so that the encounters can be constant. As this morning, I'll be resting from within the time now, I can't rest. I'm just going to pray throughout the night and ready myself for tomorrow morning's meeting. And any of you want to join, you can join. We're going to have a two-hour meeting from 7 a.m. That will be very early on, on, on the Trini side, very, very early on the U.S. side, 7 a.m. in the morning. will be around, uh, maybe it's four hours. Three o'clock. Around three o'clock, yeah. Three o'clock. And... Is our open heavens prophetic meeting? There, some people here say there's a ban on drumming and noise making, so we just have to jump on Zoom and we speak the word of God on Zoom. Okay, God is faithful. God is faithful. I want to just pray. I have a short time. I can't do any ministration that much, and I'm not limiting the spirit of God either. But I trust that what I've shared will benefit you. Um. We will share the link for um, the podcast. And anybody who is not on the WhatsApp platform, whoever invited you, just uh, ask the person to connect you to the WhatsApp platform so that we'll post information. There'll be times, maybe a whole week, maybe from Tuesday down to Friday, I'll have evening meetings 10 p.m. to 12, 10 p.m. to 12, just to teach because as I teach, I have noticed as I teach, angels go out. As I teach, the Father hearts his people. As I teach, the miraculous falls upon people. So thank you very much for being on and for the patience. Now, I want to pray for Golda. Golda, let me pray for you. You can unmute yourself. In the future, uh, because we'll be recording, sometimes I'll ask people to um, come on video. When I begin to really minister, I'll ask you to come on video. So just ready yourself. But God, I want to just pray with you. Immediately you came on. Immediately you came on. I think I'm the one who clicked to accept you into the meeting. I started seeing your right hip. Your right hip. I'm being very specific. Your right hip. I started seeing a problem in your right hip, even though Golda was telling me, was it yesterday, after she had a child in 2020 or so, 
she couldn't walk. But I'm not speaking on the basis of that. I'm speaking on the basis that God has shown me something. I'm speaking on the basis that God has shown me something. And I was seeing specifically a right hip. And the Lord said, I should pray or we should deal with that issue so it doesn't rise up ever again. I saw like the tendons in the right hip between the thigh, the bone socket. I saw that the tendons were wearing away. And so it will begin to create severe pain when, when she is sitting, severe pain when she is walking, and to incapacitate her. I pray in the name of Jesus. I pray for you, let the hand of the mighty God come upon you. In the mighty name of Jesus, let the visitation of the mighty be upon you. I take authority and rebuke the spirit of infirmity. I speak to your spirit woman. I correct that now in Jesus' name. And I ask that there shall be the manifestation of the spirit. I ask that there shall be wholeness in your body. Any fracturedness, any brokenness, anything that the enemy has planted in the realm of your spirit woman, that must manifest in your physical body regarding your hip. Let that be corrected now. Father, take this prayer, take this offering. No, let it abound unto healing manifestations in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, the Spirit of God reminds me of something, and I want to pray about that. But let me pray for Gabriel. Gabriel, um, just unmute and let's have some short conversation here, if it's okay. You know, ever since, ever since, today I'm seeing your, your picture a bit a bit clearer because it's on Zoom. I can see your picture a bit, but always on Facebook, I see, I see just that tiny widget. Okay. Yes. Um, God is, God has shown you goodness. God is showing you goodness. And the spirit of the Lord is talking to me about inflammation on your lungs. Mm. God is showing you goodness. And the spirit of God is saying inflammation on your lungs is forever gone. It's forever Thank gone. Lord. Thank you, Lord. It's inflammation on the lungs is forever gone. Thank it's you. Forever. I'm seeing a vision in the spirit, and it's like um, I'm seeing angels, like um, you know, when when um, you go to the hospital, and you have a wound, and medication is being applied on, and they are using gauze. They dip the gauze. <laughs> some fluid and they are applying it. I'm seeing that yes. happen. energetic administration. I'm seeing it. And you. right now I pray for you that you'll be able to breathe well. I don't know much about yes. you. Yeah, I don't know much about you, but God is talking to me. You'll be able to breathe well because I'm seeing your, your breath stem being cleared. Uh, let me just describe it because of time. In Jesus' name. Thank you. What I've shown you goodness and there is going to be powerful and great manifestations in your life. Thank you, Lord. Ever since I saw you online for the first ah. time, taking you as a daughter, so I carry you in my spirit, and I ask that the grace of God that is upon me will cover you also. Hallelujah. I ask that the angel of the Lord that walks with me will spend some time also with you. Thank you, Jesus. And minister to you. Every gift in you that has been corrupted from childhood, let that gift be reclaimed. I reclaim them from it. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. In the name of Jesus. And I apply it. Such an agreeing, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Never again will you experience challenges with your breath system. It's clear. Thank you. It is clear. God says it is clear. Hallelujah. It is clear. By on the 3rd of June, mm. on the 3rd of June of this month, on the 3rd of June, this this year, on the 3rd of June, 
there's going to be a very powerful encounter you have. Thank you, Jesus. On the 3rd of June. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, amen. because of the time, because the Zoom is going to go off on us in the next eight minutes. I couldn't, I've been trying to see if I can reprogram it for an extension for an hour, but forgive me. Um, and I want to just encourage everybody, spend time, build your spirit, pray in tongues also a lot, okay? Fast. If not at all, at all, at all, twice a week, fast. And when you fast, meditate in the word of God. I'll show some more, I'll teach some more things. And maybe next week when we come, please ask me questions about what I just thought about so that I can just expand it because the questions will help expand it. But God, the Lord ministered to me. I don't know if the person is here. I, I was in a vision yesterday or this morning at dawn when I was praying. I can't remember when. But between yesterday and this dawn, there's somebody who has serious challenges with alcoholism. And I don't know if the person is on or is the person connected to somebody here. I just want to pray for deliverance for the person. But I wouldn't need, if the person is here, I wouldn't need you to, to expose yourself here. You can reach out to me on WhatsApp and I'll spend some time to do that with you. Because God is delivering. Yeah. Father, I pray right now. I ask for a canopy of your presence upon everybody's spirit. From this day, as your servant, I lay injunction over every activity of the enemy against anybody. Let it be a canopy. I lay a divine injunction by God, a canopy of your spirit over everybody's spirit. A canopy that can allow people to grow in grace. People to develop a walk with you. People to see the essence of their faith. I ask in the name of Jesus that there shall be divine encounters and experiences that will bring people into the miraculous. I pray that everything that you are believing God for, the Lord will visit you. Anything from childbirth, from job, from healing, from ministry, um, prophetic abilities. Lord Nazmun said she wants to see angels and she wants to walk in the prophetic. Lord, even now, let a piece of this grace impartation go into her life. Let her be a man, a woman who is awakened to the realities of the spirit. Thank you. In the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, we pray. Amen. Gabriel, the law says never again. You will not see notes. The doctors will not see notes on your lungs. Hallelujah. Never again. They will not see. Thank you, Lord. They challenge any medical equipment plus whatever glasses the doctors wear by the power of the Spirit. Hallelujah. According to the word of the Lord on my lips. Never again. Thank you, God. God bless you, friends. God Thank bless you, Pastor. You. Thank you. I'll see you very soon. <laughs> I'll see you. Yes, I'll see you. Just watch one day. <laughs> you will just meet me and you'll go like, whoa. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Amen. Amen, friends. God bless you so much. I'm happy I was able to make it. Isaac, immediately we finish this call, I want to talk to you. Okay? I want to talk to you. If Isaac is there, I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you. There's something I wanted to pray for him over, but there's no time to do that. Great. God bless you all. God bless you all. So please share the WhatsApp group link. Let somebody connect because something is going to happen in the days and the months and the years coming. This is a legacy for a hungry generation. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. And everyone, you know my style already. I don't come asking people for money on my calls. So I know people will be joining. 
and sometimes corrupt people, some corrupt people may find our link and join. If any of the thing of the sort, if somebody reaching out to you for money, you have my direct connection. And um, I'll let you also know about my PAs. You will have my direct connection anytime you can speak to us and expose all of this. That is why we've locked the WhatsApp platform. So we don't just expose people to anything. So God bless you. Golda, God bless you. We couldn't pray much today, but next week we shall. Uh, Pastor Sami, Pastor Sami, Elevation Embassy, I, 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 it's powerful. Eh? God bless you. Hanifa, God bless you, my dear. Hanifa, can we talk on Sunday? Let's talk on Sunday. Let's talk on Sunday. Just catch me, Sunday. Isaac, I'm talking to you, Sean. Michael, God bless you, sir. Tricia, God bless you. So everyone, have a good night. Albert, this recording you can share it. You can you can share share it with um, uh, Kwame Stratos. Share it with Justice, so Justice will know what to do with it. Then we will build some things, and then uh, you can share the audio version on this on the WhatsApp platform, so people can listen again to what I've shared. Thank you. Have a good night, and it is bye bye for now.